Director's Cut. Okay, so now we have enemy preparedness. Number 11. Wait, why isn't Metal Gear Solid 5 loading faster? No, God! No, God, please! No! 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 Not that effing game. Not ever. Not even as a joke. We don't play that game. Not even as a curiosity. The two NES games are not official either, but it's okay to play them because it happened long ago. But there's no reason that will justify playing Metal Gear Survive. Ever. I don't care if you get COVID and your life, as you know it, is going to end in 10 days. You don't decide to finally play Metal Gear Survive when you have less than two weeks to live. If you get COVID, and if you happen to be part of that small percentage of those that don't have long to live, then as a hardcore gamer, you only have one option. You sell most of your worldly possessions because you're going to need that money. Then you buy a Sega Saturn in good condition. Why? Because even today, it's one of the harder consoles to emulate properly. So you need original hardware. Then you're going to buy a few of the most sought-after games for it. Panzer Dragoon Saga, Magic Knight Ray Earth, Shining Force 3, Dragon Force, and then, because we just loaded you with a bunch of RPGs, let's throw in Burning Rangers, Mega Man 8, and a Japanese-only game, Psychic Assassin Taramaru. Then you're going to play some of the best RPGs made during the 1990s, along with three other great Saturn games. And all of these games have never been ported to another system, besides Mega Man 8, of course. You will be in gaming heaven just before you end up seeing St. Peter for yourself at the gates of the real heaven. Your average gamer would never have the money to normally buy all these games. That's why you sold nearly everything you had. Seriously, buying all these games is going to set you back quite a bit. Now, we don't care about the sealed price, because we're going to play it. But even used, Panzer Dragoon is going to be around 300 to 950. Magic Knight Ray Earth is going to be about 190 to 600 dollars. So that's what you do as a hardcore gamer if you have less than two weeks to live. We don't play Metal Gear Survive, not even as a diehard Metal Gear fan. It's tainted goods. Konami made it with blood money after they fired Kojima. The only exception to this rule is if you have a YouTube channel, then you're allowed to make videos on it. But that's not the point right now. I don't want to play it. Let's get on with the real number 11. Okay, so now we have enemy preparedness. Number 11. Which is also known as the revenge system. Well, why is it called that? Well, now that you understand the enemy status and the alert levels more, now we can cover enemy preparedness. This is the big one that I talked about before in my original version of this video. When you started the game, you probably noticed that there was no difficulty setting. That's because the game uses an adaptive difficulty system. Similar to the way Resident Evil 4 worked back in the day, but this one is much more complex. The game mechanic is referred to enemy preparedness during in-game menus, although PC users have looked into the game code and they found in the files themselves that it is technically referred to as the revenge system. I will continue to use the term enemy preparedness to keep it simple because, well, like I said, that's what the game calls it. Uh, it, but the whole thing is really dictated by revenge points, you'll notice, or RP. Uh, you know, that's what determines this whole system to begin with. But if you want to look up charts on these exact specific values that I'm using, you might want to search for revenge system for Metal Gear Solid Five. So the enemy preparedness adjusts the difficulty based on various aspects of the player's methods of infiltrating outposts. All the categories are right there on your map, right here on the right side of the screen. Each icon represents a specific category. So these six categories are Fulton response, headshot response, covert actions response, combat response, nighttime response, and sniper response. 
There are six levels of difficulty for each category, represented by how red the icon gets. Level zero is represented by a transparent or see-through icon with no preparedness level outside of scripted instances within the mission or the side op itself. Now, level one begins with white as a background, and the additional levels gradually become more and more red. Dark red will be level five, which represents a high preparedness or the max level. At a basic understanding, all of your actions will result in earning RP in one category or another. Just to give you a basic idea, one level represents 100 revenge points for that category. The exact level of each revenge category is not displayed to the player in any of the menus. So all you have to indicate what level you are is those different shades of red that each icon is. Now, I don't have time to show everything for enemy preparedness. There's just way too many levels. There's too much detail. There's way too many factors and things that the game will change to make things either harder or difficult on you. But I will tell you about the one big thing that the game keeps track of is when the player completes a mission, how many combat alert elimination points were there and how many stealth phases elimination points were there. So the stealth phase means that the guard was not suspicious. They were unaware. So apparently alert level low is essentially what is required for this, as far as we know. If the player completed a mission with more stealth phase elimination points than combat alert elimination points, then points will be added to covert actions response. But points will be removed from combat response. And the opposite is true. If the player completed a mission with more combat alert elimination points than for the stealth phase elimination points, then points will be added to combat response, but points will be removed from covert actions response. I know, it's, it, it's a big complicated kind of thing, or it, it makes it seem pretty complicated and I'm trying to simplify it as much as possible. So in other words, a big decider in enemy preparedness is more when you take out soldiers and not how you do it. For example, is it nighttime and what phase is it? Is it action phase or stealth phase? Remember, the game considers the stealth phase to be when the guard is not suspicious. That means a low alert level, as far as we understand. This does not include holdups, because you made the guard aware of your presence by holding them up. Taking out guards in the stealth phase adds points to the covert actions response. It doesn't matter whether you trank them and fulton them to mother base, or whether you just kill them outright and leave their dead body where it stands. It's all about what phase you were in when you did it. Obviously, if you leave a wake of dead bodies behind you, it's more likely to get discovered by other guards. So in other words, if you eliminated a guard during a stealth phase, that's plus five revenge points to covert actions response. If you captured a guard post or outpost during a stealth phase, that's plus 15 revenge points. Once the enemy becomes suspicious, so let's say a moderate alert level, it now becomes designated as the combat phase. So if the player eliminates an enemy during a combat phase, that's plus five revenge points to combat response. And if you captured a guard post or an outpost during a combat phase, that's plus 15 revenge points to the combat response. So you can see that the categories that you will most likely need to deal with on a regular basis is covert actions and combat response. Each has six total levels, zero to five. For covert actions at level one, they add cameras. At level two, they add claymores. At level four, they replace surveillance cameras with gun cameras, but only on certain missions. And the holdup resistance is set to high. For combat response, at level one, 25% wear vest body armor, 
and they now have shotguns and light machine guns. They didn't at level zero. But by level four, 100% will wear vest body armor, and they will upgrade their armor and shields. And the ones that have shotguns and light machine guns, well, now they will get a grade four version of that weapon. So not all is lost. How do you lower your enemy preparedness? You should know that each category of enemy preparedness will decay by a certain amount when you complete a mission. So if your headshot response is at a max level of response, 70% are wearing helmets, let's say, upon mission completion, you will lower the, the RP in that category by 50. So be aware of this. Just by finishing missions, you will lower the value of each response. Also, each category can be decreased by completing a mission without doing anything that would considerably increase it. So they'll go down. I know all this seems pretty complicated, and quite honestly, this really should be, or it could be, a 20-minute video in itself, but I'm trying to cut it down to as few minutes as possible. I'm just letting you know that it's out there and it exists. Don't worry about trying to get every category down to one. The game is designed in a way that if the enemy's response to player actions are low in a few categories, then they will always be relatively high in the others. A common method of lowering several levels is by completing a mission while wearing the chicken hat or by doing a mission during the day without eliminating any guards. Because remember, like I said before, taking out guards is what's going to give you points toward one of those two categories. So just leave all the guards alone and you'll probably lower it. And the last thing you should know before we actually get out of here is that there are capped revenge categories. That's right. Levels of enemy preparedness are actually capped at certain levels until scripted points in the game are reached. So before completing mission 18, Blood Runs Deep, your max level for revenge categories are all capped at three. So you, you can't go above that. That's why I've been saying that after you complete mission 30, the game is going to get harder because that's when you basically unlock the sixth level of enemy preparedness. So now enemies have the full range of their defenses available to you by the time you actually complete mission 30. And like I was trying to say before, I don't have time to go over everything related to the point values and determining the levels, so please check out the Metal Gear Wiki location on the screen right now. It'll be in the description as well. It goes into much more detail than I have time to cover here. Just know that it's out there, it exists, and if you want to look up more details, you can do that. Bonus entry, bonus entry. That's right, we're doing another one of these because I simply couldn't fit this in anywhere else. But I wanted to recommend that you actually try out Metal Gear Online. That's right, it's right there, just sitting there. It has content in it from the game. Yeah, it uses a lot of stuff from the single player mode, obviously, but you can create your own character. There's some unique outfits other unique things in there as well. I know not a lot of people are playing it, but quite honestly, this is Metal Gear Online 3.0. I'm surprised it's even still playable today after the game came out because the other two versions of Metal Gear Online, the one made for Metal Gear Solid 3, only lasted about maybe two years online. That was on PlayStation 2. Then the other version of Metal Gear Online shipped with Metal Gear Solid 4, but that only lasted about maybe 16 months or so. So yeah, you're looking at the only playable version of Metal Gear Online right now. Kojima was involved with it. This isn't a Konami-only thing, so he actually had some say in it. So it's perfectly okay to check it out. And you might as well do it before the servers end up getting shut down. Right now, the game is selling on sale for like around five to eight dollars. So yeah, I don't know how much longer Konami is going to keep the servers up. And maybe with a small load of gamers, they might keep them up for a little while. But yeah, please check out Metal Gear Online. Create your own character. You know, yeah, there's MB coins that can buy stuff, but you also earn a currency through playing the game. But as you rank up, you'll have more outfits to choose and like I said all the weapons and stuff are kind of from the main game. You also get to play around with many of the same items from the main game. The Molotov cocktails, grenades, stealth camo. There's even a few additional things 
that are kind of meant to be fun. But yeah, you really should check it out sometime. It, it can be a little hard to get into, but if you have like a small little group that you just bought the game for like $5 on a sale, get together, group up, and you can probably actually find a small dedicated group of people that are still playing today every once in a while. Sure, you're going to get your ass handed to you to some degree because you're always going to be in a room that has a couple of guys that are going to be fully decked out or they're going to have some pretty good equipment. But they can only bring so much of that stuff into the game anyway. So get in there, rank up some, try it out because seriously, it's not going to probably last too much longer. But you'll find some good fun in there. Stabbing people, knocking them unconscious, Fultoning them. It's pretty fun. Grenade launchers, shotguns. It's a little cumbersome trying to navigate the menus and whatnot, but before you know it, you'll be getting a bunch of kills and you'll be ranking up and you'll unlock some new stuff. And yeah, if you got some extra MB coins, you can use them here and purchase yourself an outfit or whatnot. But yeah, check out Metal Gear Online sometime. Yeah, it'll be a little hard to get into, but for the most part, you're probably going to be running into a lot of other players that are trying it out for the first time. And seriously, I don't know how much longer it's going to be around, so you might as well try out a multiplayer mode that was devised by Hideo Kojima. Oh, and one more thing before I go. Remember when I was talking about that special mission that unlocks? When your men get sick? Well, I was talking it over with somebody else, and apparently that mission unlocks no matter what later on in the game. I just didn't get to that point in my PlayStation 4 playthrough. I swear I played it early, but in order to confirm that, I would have to start over a brand new game and play all the way up to, like, mission 30, and that would probably take a good 30 to 40 hours. So from what I can tell is, yes, if you do use the method to quarantine all of your men right from the start, you will still get to play that special mission. It just happens way later in the game, like before you get to the real ending. It's a ways in there, but yeah, the mission count is pretty high, but yeah, you don't get to it right away, so don't worry too much. You won't miss the mission. It just takes a little while to get to it. So I just wanted to let you know that I did find out about it, I was just going off of data from my own playthrough. I didn't see it on my PlayStation 4 playthrough, but that's because the mission automatically unlocks for you much later on. So please don't feel like you're missing anything if you're a diehard fan and you thought you might have messed it up. You didn't. You can still get to play it. Thanks to all those that have been watching. The support has been overwhelming ever since I released the main video. So thank you so much. I wanted to get this secondary video out to you as soon as I could.